formally start. All right, Pat, take it away. All right. Well, there's a ton of information on this topic. <laughs> and I might be doing a little more reading tonight than I usually do. I usually speak a little bit more off the cuff. Um, uh, and uh, because there just is so much, so much stuff to, to deal with. And um, I wanted to start with um, uh, some interesting fact. Well, I call them fact. Well, first of all, um, philosopher Jose Ortega I Gasset, who I don't know, um, I have never heard of him before, but anyways, on the power of attention, tell me what you pay attention to and I will tell you who you are. Ooh. So that's pretty deep. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so it reflects, and you know, that wouldn't be too good because I, you know, play games on my phone a lot. Like <laughs> that's where my attention is going, right? Um, but um, some, of the, some of the interesting things that I, I saw were, um, uh, when we get involved in a task, we look for a distraction. We actually look for it like every 40 seconds. Oh okay. So, and then it said, um, and that we get you so used to distraction, we distract ourselves. Um, college students only manage about 67 seconds of sustained attention at a time. All right. Which doesn't mean they don't come back to what they were doing, but it's been shown that every time you, every time you get distracted, it takes you quite a bit of time to get back to where you were, you know, like what you were doing. Um, office workers last about three minutes. So that's a lot more than um, college students, but <laughs> that's not a lot. Um, and um, the average American, and this I think is really telling, um, and I'm right up there, um, spends three hours and 15 minutes a day on their phones. On their phones? So on their phones, yes. Now, I mean, some of that is probably, you know, socializing with friends, um, either, you know, like on uh, uh, texting or, or telephoning and all, but a lot of it is, email. you know, these apps and the emails and, you know, stuff like that. So um, I thought that that was kind of um, relevant. And of course, you know, the thing is we, we talk about jet phones because that's so handy and we can use them any place, but basically we're also should be looking at like computers and, and, and iPads and, you know, all that is, you know, a wealth of other devices that we can be on. So um, during this conversation, I'm hoping that people say where they find distractions and I hope other, and I hope we're all willing to like offer suggestions to people if we have any, you know, suggestions, because I think that, um, you know, that that's really one of the benefits of this group is that we do kind of, um, you know, help each other. So, um, you know, so that would, that would be my hope anyway, is that we, um, that we do that. Um, and um, all right, so there are a lot of causes of distraction. And a lot of us think about, uh, you know, I, I was a school psychologist. I worked with a lot of kids with ADHD. And ADHD is, for, for those people with ADHD, attention is, and, and staying on track is, a dis, is a really a, a a tremendous problem. But ADHD only affects about 3% of the population. And we're all getting pretty distracted nowadays. So um, it's not, it's not just, a, it's not really a matter of ADHD. And there, those people who have ADHD, you know, might benefit from medication or whatever, but you know, they're, they're um, among really a minority of, of people. Um, technology, and that's what, you know, like if you, if you, when you start looking into like distractibility, you know, or overcoming distractions or whatever you want to say, there's so much out there now about tech. I mean, a lot of it's very repetitive, but because that's really what's causing a lot of people, you know, problems. Um, I just think it's so interesting now to go into a doctor's waiting room, everybody's on the phone, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and even like you can go to a restaurant and a couple is out having dinner and they're both on their phones. Like what's, What's that about? You're paying like a hundred bucks <laughs> or 200 bucks for your dinner. Why are you on your phone? Um, why aren't you enjoying the company of your companion? And why aren't you enjoying this wonderful food you've got there now? Because they're on the phones. Um, you see kids in restaurants and I know it's hard to take a kid to a restaurant, but you know, they have like their devices out. So they're really not learning to like interact or, That's you know, true. deal with waiter or, you know, I mean, they're not learning any of that stuff that, you know, you would hope that um, 
you know, when I was a kid, we couldn't afford to go out. So I never had that opportunity anyway. But, um, you know, but they, they're sitting there with with some kind of a device. Might be a kiddie device, not a regular iPad, but, you know. Um, so technology has really become, uh, you know, a major source of a distraction for a lot of people. Um, and lack of sleep. That's, you know, people don't always recognize that if they're not getting enough sleep, and a lot of Americans are not getting enough sleep, that that's going to impact your ability to attend the next day. Um, so, if, and especially if you've got a chronic sleep deprivation, um, for whatever reason, whether you're just not getting in enough time in bed or whether your time in bed is interrupted, you know, that you awake, you awaken in the middle of the night, have some kind of insomnia, that um, that, that does really impact uh, for a lot of people their, um, their ability to attend. Multitasking. We're going to talk a lot about multitasking, well, not about a lot, but we're going to talk about multitasking because multitasking, you can't multitask actually. If you if you're if you think you're multitasking, your attention is usually shifting from, from one thing to another. You know, maybe if you had like a radio on, or a, you know, if you're just listening to the television that you have on, well, like if you're like me, ironing, um, it, you know, it it may be it sort of you could multitask, um, but um, for the most part, no. If you're if you're multitasking, um, you're really just shifting your attention back and forth, and that's a problem because you can't always um, do um, uh, you can't always re redirect your attention each time that you're shifting back and forth. Um, aging. I'm going to talk about this. How aging. It was very depressing to me being a senior citizen <laughs> to read like how aging impacts um, your attention um, and mind wandering. Um, and there were some, so, you know, how often have you found yourself doing something and then your mind wanders to like other things? And mind wandering is not a bad thing, um, but we'll talk about that, how, you know, how kind of you can corral your mind wandering. So, um, have I hit everything, or do do do? Any, does anybody out there think that they have another occasion? <laughs> we still go about occasions of sin in the Catholic Church. Occasion <laughs> of 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 um, inattention. <laughs> Is there anything else that causes particular a particular problem for you? Yeah. Nope. Nobody. Okay. If you have a specific learning impairment in a skill, uh -huh. like. Like for me, it's math. Okay. In, in like particularly like math, reading math. Uh -huh. I will start to get distracted like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, well, yes, yeah, so because the thing is, if, if the information load is so great, you know, like you're looking yeah. for a way to bail yourself out. Yeah. Yeah. And I can certainly understand that. You know, I can, uh, you know, I can, <laughs> over the course of my ac academic career, there were plenty of times I was like, <laughs> ask me about, um, about neuropsych when I was at Columbia. That was pretty bad. <laughs> so yes, I, that, that does happen. Cause it's just, it's just like your brain is on overload. Um, yeah. And there's not, there's, um, it's hard even to say like to break that up into smaller segments because um, once you've gotten like these terms and you're, you know, you're kind of getting in the group, like to just stop and say, okay, it's 15 minutes. That's plenty enough time for now. And I'll do it later because then you're, it's a, it's a lot to start up again. On the other hand, if you're spending an extended time on something, you're even more likely to have your mind wander. So it's, you know, it's a balancing act there with that. Um, I don't know that I have any terrific suggestions for that. Um, uh, get a tutor, maybe. <laughs> Pat, I think your timer idea works well with this because then you don't get frustrated, right? You do like 10, 15 minutes, you do yeah. the timer, you get up, you take a walk, you get a drink of water or something, and then you go back to it. Like that kind of helps me too to re like reset. Well, and the thing is then that it might work for, you know, it, the different things are going to work for different people. I'm a big believer in a timer because I, I think it helps you focus because you're only focusing for, you say, I, I got to do this like in 15 minutes and I'm not doing anything else for 15 minutes. If you say, I'm not going to do anything else for two hours, forget it. Yeah, you know, that's not going to work. Um, but um, the only thing is, I mean, it, but you do have to kind of think about how is that, you, and, and it's certainly something to try. How is it working? Because sometimes 
because when you interrupt and then you have to re-engage, and especially if you're dealing with some kind of dense kind of material, it may be more difficult, it, but it depends. And, then, and that's something that, you know, you need to, to try and see how it works for, for you because, um, and that's, a, that's an easy fix. If it works, that's terrific. It's a, it's an easy fix that um, you just, you know, and everybody's phone has a timer on it. So that's one way you can use your phone productively is to put the timer on. Um, and if you feel like you can keep going, you could just keep going, you know? Um, but yeah, that's, um, we'll, we'll probably talk a little bit more about that later, but yeah, the timer is a, a gem um, in so many situations. Hey, Pat, recently, I don't know what category this falls in, but I do this on many levels. Like I'll start an email, for example, mm -hmm. and maybe I'll get through most of it. And then there's something I want to think about or I want to finish or look up. And then I say, well, I'll do that after lunch, right? <laughs> six o'clock at night, I see the email never went out and I've been waiting for a response all day. <laughs> And, but I mean that I use that and I'm laughing, but it's symptomatic of other things that are going on. Well, you know what you know what helps there? I'll tell you. Right here, my drone. Post-it notes. Okay. <laughs> I'm a person that goes back and forth to the computer a lot. Like I'll do, I'll do like, you know, five minutes of 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 um People probably think I'm on the computer all the time because if you send me an email, you might get a response in like, you know, 10 minutes because, you know, I'm everyone. I mean, I don't know how many times a day I'm on for doing five minutes at a time. I set the timer. I do set the timer to do the email because I don't want to get, you know, it's, it can be like such a time suck to get, you know, like you'll never get out of the email. But um, uh, so but I have been known to put to, to to take the, you know, out of the drawer, take a post-it note and put it on the computer. You know, and so that's the kind of thing is like email so and so or, um, you know, call so and so about this thing, because, you know, that person wasn't around at the time when you wanted to call them, um, you know, and it's it's yeah. just post it notes really help. <laughs> so I have I bought a, a gajillion of these little tiny post it notes. That's all I need to to for as so to set as a reminder. Um, you know, I don't know that there's anything else much you could do, but it's it's particularly convenient because, you know, you could have the post-it notes with your computer and it could be there, you know. Uh, so if you want to remind yourself to finish something up, you can do that. So that's-, that's no, that. I haven't thought about this in years, but when you're talking about concentrating and not getting distracted, when I was in graduate school, we had dedicated carols mm -hmm. and the carols were very high on the side and very deep. So you oh. didn't see anybody and you- yeah. So you could do your reading, you could do your writing, and hours would go by. Absolutely, uh -huh. hours would go by, and you'd go, "Oh wow, well, my I guess I guess a lot. I got a lot of work done." <laughs> but I mean, I think carols are wonderful. Yeah, and the thing is, a lot of libraries have them. I mean, not not Crestwood because <laughs> we're so tight on space, no, space. but um, you know, especially like I know that when I was um, in in. Um, I guess it was, I was an undergraduate when I was at Columbia, but anyway, I would go to um, uh, near near where my, you know, I grew up, where my, my parents lived with Sarah Lawrence and uh, that library could walk in anytime. And it was, was wonderful. I, I think things have gotten a lot tighter yes, they have. than they were in those days, but sometimes you can get some kind of a pass or something to go to the library, but yeah, that's Carol's, uh, you know, are a great idea when you're home, not so good. But yeah. if you're not, you know, but if you can, if you can find a place where um, a library that you can use, maybe some, an institute that where you went to school uh, or something like that, and you really had to knock something out, that would be very, a very helpful idea. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Pat, a lot yeah. of people have those, you know, those shoji screens that you can have, like to divide up your apartment or your room. Oh, right. So yeah, like, like a Japanese paper screen. That at home could be um, yeah. helpful as well. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and at the I mean, library we use for the children, we have those like at the teacher store, you can get them. They're like, you know, at the voting booths, you have like many things they are smaller mm -hmm. because yeah. they're smaller. So you can, you know, and we put them on the desk. So three kids could share the desk, but like huh. have different parts of the desk. And then that way they're not distracted by each other while they're trying to focus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, that is that's that is awfully, or, or, often very helpful. We use those in the classroom when I was a school psychologist. Um, you know where where you know if you if a kid could go, you know 
to the study center. <laughs> you know, if they had to finish, they had to, you know, take a test that they missed the day before, or if they needed to just to be away from other kids to, to, to work on something. Um, and they are, they are very helpful. So, um, you know, again, it's a little bit harder, you know, in the house maybe, um, but uh, thinking about how, it, it depends on too, some people are more distracted by the visual and some people are more distracted by what they hear, you know? So um, for instance, like somebody working, trying to do their work in a coffee shop, which I think is a terrible idea, but whatever. Um, if they were at Starbucks or something, you know, like if you are auditory, I have auditory distraction, you're going to be listening to that conversation. Those two ladies sitting there, you know, I'm going to be, you know, it's like, <laughs> you, you may not even care about the conversation, but you just can't resist, you know. Um, uh, but other people, it's more visual. Uh, so if you, you know, so and you have to kind of judge yourself, like what's, what, what do you should be, what should you be most mindful of? You know, the, the visual things or the, or the auditory things um, and kind of like think about your environment a lot. So, um, you know, now um, um, I wanted to talk about, a little about the consequences of inattention, of distraction. Um, very often, because we get so fragmented, it leads, it leads to very poor problem solving. That's what the, um, the research has shown is that it's, you know, like it's really difficult to get your act together and actually um, take care of business, take care of, uh, you know, a, a, a problem because you just, you, you, your mind is going in all kinds of different directions. And the other thing is fatigue. Getting distracted, pulling yourself back, getting yourself or, or reoriented to where you were in the task and well, is, is can be very tiring. So that it can create, you know, some kind, some time for some people anyway, um, you know, really almost a, a, like a physical fatigue. It's just, just so wearing to do that. Um, I don't know if anybody else had any other experience that they, any consequence that they feel from inattention. I mean, besides not getting your work done. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, all right. So, and, and then, I, you know, I think, I think I kind of covered multitasking, but um one, you know, you know, because just because of the shifting attention when you when you're multitasking, uh, but social scientists who studied it found that there's what they call a switch cost. Okay, so there's four four penalties kind of that come from multitasking. One is poor efficiency, like if you just tackled one task at a time and got through it, um, or even did like a good chunk of it, um, you would be you, it would function more efficiently than the, than the multitasking and switching back and forth. Even though you feel at the time, like, oh, God, I'm handling, handling these two things at one time. You're really not handling two things at one time. You're switching back and forth between the two things. It also affects creativity and memory, okay? I'm not sh quite sure I understand why, but that's what they said, that you're not as, you know, you're not as creative and um, you're, uh, I think probably because creativity requires that you have time to think. Mm -hmm. And if you're constantly worried about back and forth and back and doing different things, then you're not really giving yourself that time to, you know, to make the connections and all that would lead to, to, to creativity. Um, um, and memory, um, you know, and, but that's not really so, um, uh, so surprising and it's kind of the same thing that you're not giving yourself time to like incorporate the information whatever you're learning from what you're doing so it affects it affects your memory um and huh, i'm not sure how much this would how much this is that would be significant but it has been also showed to depress iq <laughs> So if there's anything that's going to keep you from multitasking, just think about your IQ. <laughs> and again, I think it's probably knowing social scientists, it's probably like from when you walk into the lab until you you know, you walk out. Um, but it's not necessarily a, a lingering problem, but that, you know, but, but that's some of the research anyway. Um, more significant, and I think for, you know, many of us in this crowd, um, aging. Okay, and this, I'm gonna read these because this is like very depressing to me. Um, 
Okay, our overall cognitive ability is to de decline, such, such as attention. A lot of that's brain changes and all, um, and it's a little harder to manage. I mean, even for those of us who don't have like significant memory problems or whatever, um, you know, there is a decline. And, um, you know, so um, uh, it, it can affect your ability to attend. Um, uh, hearing loss, and that's a biggie. Yeah. If you have, if you have hearing problems, and I've, you know, I've been with, um, we have one particular friend who, even with his hearing aids that he paid a lot of money for, and would admit that they're not really working too well. Um, you know, how much of the conversation he's missing? How much, you know, um, you know, if, if for your auditory information, he might be fine on visual because it shuts his. Uh, <laughs> It shuts his input down, right? And it, which might let him concentrate better on a visual task. But when it comes to, um, and you know, something that requires auditory attention, you know, it's it's going to have it. It really impacts him. Um, okay, a reduction in processing speed. Now you might think, you know, you don't have to be so quick anymore. You know, you're you're retired. You're you know relaxed and, but. When information is coming in, you need to be able to, to process it, um, you know, quickly and able to be, to be, to understand it, to be, understand what's, what you're getting and to, to act on it. And our processing speed, and it's not really always so noticeable, you know, it's gradual over the years, but your processing speed declines. So that's another reason that um, for inattention, because you're missing stuff. Um, you just can't, you know, you're not keeping up with the, and uh, let's, let's face it right now, there's, no matter what you're doing, it seems like there's a wash of information coming at you at all times. So uh, that can be a, a, an effect, have an effect on attention. Um, poor sleep, we talked about poor sleep, uh, and poor sleep for Younger people might be because they're staying up to little hours and they're getting up early for a job or, um, you know, uh, for other reasons, you know, for whatever reason. Um, but for the, those of us who are older, it's because it's more trouble maybe falling asleep, more trouble staying asleep. We get up to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, yeah, once, twice, whatever. Uh, so all of that, um, you know, impacts your sleep. And, um, you know, again, less sleep, more problems with attention. Um, uh, you know, it's for some cases, it doesn't matter because maybe our day is not full of always full of things that, you know, are, are really, you know, critical. Um, but it does, it does impact the attention, um, aches and pains, and you really can't minimize that. I mean, you know, even, even if your pinky hurt, <laughs> how many times you think about that, you know, it's bothering you and, and your attention goes there rather than someplace else. Never mind if you have, you know, serious arthritis or, um, you know, you just had some kind of surgery or whatever, where those, um, um, those things are uh, more, um, you know, significant and will really take your attention away from, you know, it's uh, uh, things that you want to do. You know, you're trying to write a letter, you're trying to uh, deal with this pile of email, you're trying to do this and it's, you know, that hip is really bothering you. Um, so, so aches and pains are a problem. And then there are medications. And I don't know, I don't know about you, I don't like to read all the possible side effects of things that I take because, um, you know, then you start, you know, getting a little bit um, uh, hypochondriacal, <laughs> hypochondriacal, um, because it just is, you know, like it's every side effect that anybody ever reported to the company, even if it had nothing to do with the medication, if it, they experienced it while they were on the medication, then, you know, uh, it gets put in that, you know, paper. But um, there are medications that that may, you know, and the thing is, if it's a medication you have to take for whatever reason, you got to take it, right? Uh, but it might um, affect your um, ability to attend. So if you're having difficulty with that, you know, you might want to check out the medications and then see if, um, you know, maybe they could prescribe something else for you, something different. So um, do any of those ring true for anybody? Yes, no, maybe. Okay. We went over like so many things that it was amazing, but um, <laughs> I like I'm hearing so many things that you're saying tonight that have been a lot of things that I've been thinking for a long time. So okay. I immediately feel 
I feel smarter now than I did in the last Zoom that I was on. Um, <laughs> but I, I've always like told my kids who are not like enthusiastic readers that they need to read more because um, your attention span isn't just mental, it's physical. Like mm -hmm. there, there, there's, there's a physical component to being able to actually That's like sick. maintain your attention and, and you know, stick to a task. If you're so used to, you know, changing gears, changing tasks every, what was that horribly, you know, incredibly low amount of seconds that college students can. Uh, six, I think it's 67, I think. Like, I think isn't, isn't that insane? I mean, that's insane. Um, yeah. And I, I really, I, since I'm a mom, I'm always looking for ways, or I was always looking for ways when my kids were smaller to like, you know, in, improve everything they did. And I really saw that, you know, having the phone in their hand was a detriment to them developing their attention span. And I hate to sound like a dinosaur, but I really think it's true. And right. I, I really think that being able to sit down with a book and lose yourself in a book for like a while, yeah. I think it's a really important um, quality and an important physical skill to have. I mean, that's the problem. And you mentioned creativity. We, we don't get to have creativity because we can't lose ourselves in anything because we're constantly being yanked out of whatever, you know, flight our mind is taking us on. We have no chance to follow any nugget of inspiration. Wow. Like I, I don't know. I, I feel smarter tonight, Dr. Pat. <laughs> Um, well, you know, it's funny I, what you I know. haven't been on the wrong track at all. No, you haven't been. Um, and and that and that's it. The reading will help, I think. Uh, but you know, it also works the other way. I have one of my four sons is um, has ADHD, and um, it, when he had to do his summer reading, he, he was on this um, concerta that was like a twelve-hour medication. So he would take it in the morning, and it would cover him for the whole day or whatever. Um, and then. Um, but in the summer, uh, I asked the doctor for the four hour, like a Ritalin, which was four hours, because um, he would he would take the Ritalin, wait 30 minutes and then sit down to do his summer reading because he couldn't concentrate enough on the reading without the medication which was, you know, really an eye opener for me like this, you know, that um, that uh, he had this much trouble concentrating. Um, but I think that if you. Um, even for younger kids, if you read to them with no pictures, you know, a chapter book, like to read, a, you know, a chapter at night, and, you know, when the kids go to bed or something like that, um, we're all pretty much past that age when, you know, we've got kids to read to, but maybe grandkids. Um, but but it's it really does help kids develop, um, you know, the attention span to stick with the story, the um, ability to um, kind of... Uh, Imagine, um, Deirdre Breslin, who was, um, as a little aside, but uh, she was uh, uh, Jimmy Breslin's um, sister, and she had, a, she had a doctorate in reading. She was a reading specialist. And she talked about going to, to some schools to read, like for St. Patrick's Day, since they're Irish. Um, she would, you know, she would bring some Irish stories to read. And the kids wanted the pictures. Like, where were the pictures? Because they couldn't really they couldn't imagine you know they watched television or they did they always had like pictures and um it was very hard for them to actually um you know kind of put it together in their heads and 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 imagine what it would be like so um but you know so reading reading does have a big effect i think on um you know uh i mean i think we've all probably had the experience of losing yourself in a book oh you know, Absolutely. I mean, where it's like, you know, oh my goodness, it's like an hour later, two hours later, and I'm still reading <laughs> because I'm so into this. Um, and you can, you know, you maintain your, you know, attention. So anybody else have any comments? No? Okay. Um, all right, we did aging. Um, uh, I try not to think about that. I, I was going to say that um, the fatigue, like I know I don't get enough sleep, uh -huh. but um I actually hadn't made the link that like as directly as you had made today between distraction and lack of sleep. Yeah. So yeah. It's, yeah. If you're, yeah, it's really, it really is, can, can be remarkable. Like the ability to, to stay with something if you're really, you know, tired, it's like, you know, you just can't, I mean, you could for, for short periods maybe, but not for any kind of extended period. It just, it gets to be too much. 
So, um, uh, now, all right, so we talked about the causes and what happened. What are we gonna do about this? <laughs> Um, does anybody have any, before I begin, before I have my laundry list of suggestions here, uh, does anybody else have any, uh, any, any ideas about, you know, how you handle it? Yes, Jackie. Um, well, I, my daughter also has ADHD and lists help uh -huh. working in that list, whether you bullet point it or put stickers on it. Mm -hmm. Um, I build in, you know, take 15 minutes to take a break and then get back to it. Uh -huh. um, you know, so break it, breaking things down into smaller bits or okay. having a flow chart, mm -hmm. um, you know, helps like right. to get them because sometimes, and not just with people with ADHD, it's getting that flow going. And then all of a sudden you ever have a moment where you just stop, like I was going, 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 and then oops. And then mm -hmm. you sort of, run out of gas or something. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, yeah, because sustaining your attention takes some energy. So, um, you know, if, you're, if you've been at it for quite a while, sure, you've just hit, the, hit, a, hit a wall and you need to do something else and you need to, you know, you need to take a break. And, you know, when we talk about attention and we talk about distractions and all, it doesn't mean, um, you know, because I'm going to get to that about how you, it, how you need to, to have breaks you know, for your, for your yourself. And not everything has to be, you know, like a, a drudgery. Um, yeah, so, okay. So one of the things is um, prioritizing a to-do list. <laughs> now, you know, like I really don't, um, I don't know how many of you keep to-do lists. Um, a lot of us do, or you, even at the, even a particular day, you might just say, okay, I gotta get these five yeah. things done or whatever. Think about what's most important. And we don't always do that because it's so easy. Like you really want to knock these things off. So you go for the easiest thing, like take out the garbage. Okay. You know, <laughs> and that's like two minutes. So you got the garbage out and, you know, Hey, I can knock that off my list. But the thing that's like, you know, um, plan my, you know, your husband's, uh, you know, birthday party. <laughs> yeah. You know, that gets bumped down, but maybe the birthday is on Saturday and you really need to get on the roof. <laughs> you know, like you need to, you need to, to do something about that. So you really have to, so if you, you know, so if you have, um, and you should be doing that when you're fresh, you know, like, so this is, this is where the attention comes into play. Um, so, you know, if you're attending to the wrong things, that doesn't mean that it's better <laughs> than not attending. <laughs> um, you really need to focus on the more important, the more important things. So um, I would, um, you know, I, I, that's why uh, the recommendation is um, uh, to to like look at what's most important and and focus on that first. Um, and you know, one one quote that I have from someplace, I don't know is um, getting things done is far less important than getting the important things done. So, and you'll feel better about, about it. Um, and you know, the more important things tend to be like a more involved or less exciting, you know, but, but in the long run pay off more. And that's, uh, so you spend your attention where it's important. Um, and, um, Sometimes if we think about, okay, this is the most important thing. I don't want to do it, but sometimes that will help us focus. If we acknowledge that this is what we really need to be doing at this time now, you know, and you can also think about how you're going to feel when it's done. <laughs> You'll feel very good about yourself because it was so important. Um, so, uh, and um, in terms of, in terms of prioritizing and, um, and doing things that that benefit you um near I, I hope i hope i'm saying his name correctly near ayal um has written a lot on on distraction and he says um he calls that he he talks about distraction and traction so distraction is anything that's moving you away from your goals and traction so it's nice to have something like you know thinking about traction moves you toward your goals so I kind of fit that in, you know, with this, you know, with the idea of prioritizing, you know, what you're, what you're doing. Um, and um, in some ways that gets your attention to pay off, 
if you spend your your valuable attention on a lot of like piddling things and you might get down to the piddling things before the day is done but if you spend if you spend your time on that first then um you know you're not really um you're not getting the the bang for your buck so um prioritize um and then the habits and i don't know about you but i have some habits that can probably be changed if i want to get things done in my life um, I'm a crossword puzzle freak, and um, I uh, probably I I always do three crosswords a day. Sometimes, sometimes more. <laughs> okay, I know, I know it's a lot. I know, <laughs> but it's my thing, right? Um, so uh, you know that that habit. I'm sure at times this doesn't really serve me well. <laughs> it's time that, you know, maybe I could have spent on something else. On the other hand, maybe I'm helping my brain. I don't know, but, um, yeah, brain. but um, you know, uh, you know, and if you grab your phone, if the habit is every time you, you know, every time it buzzes, you pick it up, even though you're in the middle of something else or, you know, um, you have to just think about your habits. I, I don't know what habits you might have that would interfere with your ability to attend and to stick with something. Uh, but uh, but think about it because um, uh, and and what happens is when you're distracted, it's not so important that you got distracted. It's what you did when you got distracted. You have to start thinking about if, if distraction is really an issue for you. You have to start thinking about what you did when you were distracted. Did you just go with that? Or were you able to bring yourself back? And if you were able to bring yourself back, what did you do? What did you tell yourself? What? Because that will that will help you in the long run. So if you were able to say, no, you know, I've got to stay. And 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 you were able to tell yourself of a specific thing, or you were able to look at like an aspect of the task you were doing or something. Um, I don't know. There's just so many possibilities here. Um, but to kind of like monitor, you know, what what kind of causes me to get distracted? Because sometimes we can change the environment. We'll probably get to that. But um, so sometimes it's a matter we can change the environment or sometimes it's like recognizing what you did or how you thought about something that enabled you to move on. Okay, so that's that's something that, um, you know, this monitoring can really help. Um, okay, um, we talked about talking about, thinking about your goals for the day. Um, and your goals don't always have to be very lofty. Like if you're making a to-do list, these don't have to be like, you know, save the world, you know, um, lobby for world peace or something. You know, it just has to be, um, you know, things that, you know, you would hope to accomplish. And sometimes just the idea of having goals helps to keep us focused, you know? Like, so just think, I mean, it could be even just thinking about them in the morning, but I think it would help to, to write a few things down that this is how this at the end of the day, this is what I'd like would like to have gotten accomplished. Um, and, um, you know, I, w one of the books um, that uh, actually Z and I both bought this book, she bought it for the library and I bought it for myself because it sounded so good. Um, things that matter, I think is what it was called. And basically when I started reading it, not that it's not a great, it's probably a very good book, um, but I stopped reading it because it really wasn't about you know, these little day-to-day -day distractions. It's kind of like, you know, choosing how you're going to spend your life, you know, kind of. It was it was a bit more broad than, um, you know, I had envisioned for this this session here. So, um, uh, so I'm not talking about those kind of goals, you know. Um, I'm just talking about, um, you know, kind of your day-to-day -day things or what you want to hope to accomplish in a week or, you know, even in a month. To, but, you know, um, where, where, what direction are you going? And what's getting in your way of that, and 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 what kinds of things are distracting you from that? Um, okay. Um, all right. And then the other thing is, um, a lot of people think that you know, if you're doing something frivolous like me and my crosswords, um, that it's a waste of time. No. And it's it's not necessarily even even if it even if it's I don't know. I mean, I can't think of something right now, but um, it would, if you enjoy something, it's that makes something worth doing also, you know? So um, you have to allow yourself some time in the day to do things that you like. If you spend a whole day doing stuff, you don't know, crazy about doing, 
and you know sometimes you gotta but most of the time you don't. then you know um we, you know like there's no joy in life so you really have to think about you know you know like injecting some joy into into what you're doing um and and allowing some time in the day uh and you're probably not going to get distracted i don't get distracted by crosswords man you know i'm like a pot of coffee and you know the three crosswords in the morning and i'm good so um uh you know that's that's just my words of wisdom yeah <clears throat> Any questions, any thoughts, comments before I move on? No? Okay. Um, uh, boy, the time is going here. Um, all right. The practical tip, tips. And I'm, I'm gonna send you these, I am. Um, because I thought it was, you know, it was interesting to put all these things in one place, but um, think of time as a valuable commodity. We have talked about this, about, you know, distractions steal your time. So think about your time and how are you using your time? And, um, you know, I come back to that every, 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 every several times during the day, it might help. Um, one of the things, and it just sounds kind of like, um, although I am reading a book now that has to do with this digital detox. Are anybody familiar with the phrase? Okay, what it means is like no phones, <clears throat> no computer, no iPad, nothing for a certain period of time and you know I, I this one this one book I'm reading now the guy just took his his stuff and he gave it to a friend and then he went out to um uh someplace on Cape Cod you know to hang out and and how awkward it was at first and how but how he began he felt thinking more and living more in the moment and um you know, appreciating things more because he wasn't on the phone, the computer, the buddy all, all the time. So um, I think that that's a little radical and um, I don't know that many of us could do it, but it is something to think about for if, you, if, if you're gonna work on something, if you want to spend some time, you might wanna put, you know, turn off the, the gadgets and put them in another room. Make it hard to get, or give them to a give them to a spouse or a friend or whatever for like you know a couple of hours so that you can get done what you need to get done, without you know without having to check. You know I know when I have a text come in, I'm looking. If a text came in now, I'd probably you know be looking <laughs> to see what was on it. <laughs> um, you know it's got to be one of my kids, right? I have to know. Uh, so um, you know you have to. Um, uh, take a look at, at uh, uh, that, but think about it, you know, and sometimes depending on the, what you've got on your plate and what you need to do, that might be, um, you know, a solution. Just put them in another room, turn them off, put them in another room. And, you know, when your timer goes off, then use a, use a stove timer or something. Um, you can go back and fetch them. So um, that's a, a digital detox. Um, and, um, Okay, break. Um, sometimes our attention is really just a matter of we expect to maintain our attention forever, like for, you know, three hours straight or something. It's not going to happen, you know? So think about what's a reasonable time or when, or if you've been doing something and you tend to get a little squirrely after 45 minutes or something. Well, that's, that's your period. That's your period. Um, you know, set your time up for 45 minutes. And then after that, you give yourself... Um, you know, um, permission for a break or permission to leave it till the next day, whatever, whatever, you know, works for the task that you're on. So um, I think that, um, you know, that's something that you might, um, you know, want to um, think about. Um, um, okay. This I haven't done, but this is um, interesting. Close the windows that you're not using on the computer. <laughs> Just keep the one open that you, you need to open. And I think it's just probably especially true if you're writing something or, um, you know, if there's something that you're doing like other than, than um, on the internet. Um, don't leave that. Don't leave, you know, um, uh, the browser up. Close it. Um, and you, and you, you won't be distracted. Right now, I've got, <laughs> oh, it's got to be, well, it's not a dozen, maybe seven windows. I mean, they're not open, but there's the tabs are there with all those, you know, tempting um, uh, the tabs that I could click on to, you know, 
to read something I didn't finish before or I didn't, you know, I wanted to look at. I, I put it up there so I would do it sometime tonight. Um, you know, so I think that that can be that can be pretty distracting for some of us anyway to have to have those things there. You know, you're supposed to be doing something, but oh, I'll just check this. Um, uh, I'm not on Facebook, but I know that for a lot of people, that's something that they, um, you know, they have to keep checking all day um, and it will interrupt what they're doing. Um, okay. Um, all right. Earplugs or noise canceling headphones. Now, noise canceling headphones are kind of big, you know, um, and for most of us, you don't necessarily, well, depends on what your household is like. Some households can be pretty chaotic and it might be good to have like ear earplugs or, or headphones. Um, but, um, you know, think about the auditory. Now, for some people, if outside is, or, or the rest of the house, if you've got the door closed and you can still hear the rest of the house, sometimes white noise helps. Now, I have a white noise app on my phone, but of course then you've got the phone, you know, maybe I don't want to have the phone, um, but, um, you know, so a white noise machine or, or, or the app, um, which gives you, you could, I could listen to like the railroad, you know, that, that sound of a railroad or, or um, you know, the beach or something, but, um, or just, just a white noise, um, which is, you know, so you can begin to ignore it, but it does kind of hide other, you know, other ambient sounds. Um, or music, but there's a lot of caveats with music. Um, I know that people who are, and Glory can probably tell me about this, if you're musically trained, it's difficult not to really attend to the music. For some of us, music can be in the background. It can cover other noises and be, make a pleasant atmosphere, but we're not really into the music, you know, like, like seriously into the music. Um, and um, one thing I would say is don't play anything, well, don't play anything with lyrics, but also don't play anything with even an instrumental, if you know the lyrics, if, if it's something that has lyrics and you know the lyrics, because that's distracting. You start thinking about, you know, you're singing along with it. Well, that's not good. <laughs> if it's if it's if it's just mute, ambient music, you know that that um, something calming. Um, and um, and again, if it's, especially if it's serving to um, ha to to you know, kind of like shroud other noises in the environment. That's, that's a good thing. Um, and does anybody else have any, any other tips for, for noise, you know, likes to um, avoid the noises in your environment? Anything anybody does? I mean, I don't have a particularly noisy environment here. So, um, you know, no more kids running around, <laughs> no dogs anymore. So uh, it's, a, it's, it's kind of quiet. Um, sometimes, well, sometimes about the music, sometimes uh, I'm reading, you know, and Andy will say, do you want music? And I think it's, it'll be nice, you know, and then, then I forgot about the book and I'm concentrating on the music. Yeah. So you're right. I mean, it, it, it depends who you are. And even mm -hmm. if it's a symphony or something like that, it has to be some sort of very boring music. <laughs> well, and, then, and then you don't want to be bothered with it right it's more no, but you can really like symphonies when i was in college and i had a walkman that's how old i am i used to go to the library and put my walkman on to study to my favorite like mozart tape of like four different symphonies but then i got to know them so well and i am not a musician but i got to know them so well and i loved them so much that i wound up finding, finding them completely distracting because i would be anticipating what was going to be happening in the music even though i am not a musician and i wound up having to abandon that whole you know musical study strategy what's you know completely because it wasn't doing me any good at all i just wanted to listen to the music and i wasn't getting my work done yeah. So I, I understand the musician's dilemma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting really... topic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's 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 funny that it's true because um, when I was in grad school, I was with um, I, you know a couple of um, one of one of my somebody who was in my study group was an accomplished pianist, and it, but it was like you know why he was studying psychology, I don't know, he should do something else, but um, uh, you know, but he he had said that too that it was difficult, he couldn't have any music on, couldn't listen to any music. Um, so that's something, you know, again, a lot of these things are things that you have to kind of, um, um, you know, explore for yourself, what works for you. Um, and for somebody like, 
uh, you know, who might, maybe earplugs will, you know, maybe noise canceling headphones. I guess that makes me a little nervous because I, I, I'm afraid I'll miss something like that's, you know, like something crashing or whatever. I don't know, but, um, uh, you know, you know, and if you, if you're in a quiet environment, it doesn't even, it doesn't matter. You don't have to, you don't have to, enough, you've got nothing to cover up. So, um, and let's see, where were you? Airplugs. Okay. Um, all right. Um, oh, this is an interesting one that um, I forget, you know, I called these from several places. Um, when you're finished, like if you worked on something, you know, like for instance, me here in my office, you know, if um, clean, put, it, put a timer on two minutes, clean up when you're finished or five minutes, like straighten it up. Because what that does is when you come back the next day, or for your next session, like a morning session, an afternoon session, whatever, um, it it helps keep you focused. If there's less stuff around and less mess, or, you know, and you don't just start going hunting for stuff and all, it will it will help keep you on track. So um, so that's that's an idea which was I really wouldn't have considered um, including that for you know distractibility. I mean, it's a good it's a good um, um, strategy you know, to clean up after yourself <laughs> um, and saves you a lot of time very often in the long run. But um, I wouldn't have thought it in terms of like, you know, not helping to, to, to lower the distractions. So, um, okay. Um, oh, this is important. Find this, we talk about this a lot with the decluttering stuff, find a home for everything. You know, things you own should have a place that they live. Because sometimes what happens is we go off like on some kind of a rabbit hunt when we can't find this, we can't find that. Where's a pen, you know? And if you're looking all over the house for a pen, you know, get, get yourself a pencil cup or something. I don't know. Um, but that can, take, that can take you away from a task and then you may never get back, okay? So um, if you have, you know, I mean, it's hard to say a place for everything and everything in this place um, but close to it <laughs> anyway, so that you know where you can find stuff and you don't, you don't get distracted because you're looking for things, you know, I need a, I need a piece of paper. I need a, you know, like you should be able to find things that you need without, you know, a, a huge, a huge problem. Okay. What else we got here? Um, okay. Well, I forget multitasking, but I think I've made my points about multitasking. Um, okay. FOMO. Are you all familiar with the term FOMO, F-O-M-O? Okay, fear of missing out, okay? The fear of missing out, like, makes us alert all the time. Like, we want to be in on everything, you know? You don't have to be in on everything. And, but, so the thing is, you're not really here in the present in whatever it is you want to be doing because, you know, like, oh, you hear this, you know, you're making this cake. Well, did I put the salt in? Didn't I put the salt in? Didn't you know? <laughs> And, and you're gone like you know it's it, um so a uh, fear of missing out is is uh kind of you know uh important uh you have some things you just have to like let it go all right and you don't have to be in on everything and you don't have to you know like absolutely everything um okay um and then basically said fomo means not really paying attention to anything which is the problem okay um Okay, fragmenting your attention. It, fragmenting your attention is negative in a lot of ways, and one of the ways is that it 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 affects your um, it affects your uh, your stamina, and and it makes your attention and your um, and causes fatigue, which makes your attention worse. Okay, so if you're inattentive, it makes you tired, which makes you more inattentive. So, you know, uh, you really have to work on, on watching, maintaining the attention in the first place because otherwise you're gonna be in a worse spot than you were to begin with. Um, all right, um, consider a nap if you need one. A lot of us are very reluctant to think that we need to rest at all or, you know, we're superwomen or supermen or whatever, um, but you might wanna think about that um, and, um, uh, you know, grab a nap if you, you need one, because if you're, if you I mean, sometimes it makes you a little logy when you get up and whatever, and it's a little hard to get going, but if you really need a nap, you're not doing yourself any favors by, you know, you know, sh you know, 
powering through. Um, okay. Um, scheduling your day. There, you know, there is somebody, this Nirael that I talked about before. He's really big on scheduling things. That, that they get done that way. And if you've allotted a certain amount of time, you tend to you know, focus your attention at that time and not get distracted. So um, you know, think about that. Like if you, you know, if you have like five things that you want to do, even if you write, you know, have a very brief um, you know, calendar kind of a thing, and you know, put in when you're doing what time, when what time you're doing it. So um, uh, you know, that's that's a that's something that for some people might be very important. Um, okay. Um, all right. I know I'm not on social media. I know that it's very important to a lot of people. Um, and, um, I know I'm an old fogey. Um, but if you on social media, I have, you know, like I won't object to that, but you might want to schedule a certain time a day, you know, so that, you know, you're going to get to it. I'm going to do it, you know, like uh, three o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, I don't know. Whenever. You know, I'll do it first thing in the morning, but, but whenever you, you know, like, but, but that's your time, you know, and then if you have more time, like before you go to bed or whatever you could do, you know, you could do have, be on it for longer, but, um, you know, so I'm spending, and I don't know, whatever you need, depending on, you know, how active you are online, um, you know, 15 minutes or half an hour or an hour, whatever you, you need, but schedule it so that, you know, you're going to get it. And, um, and that, and that's, you know, and, and even then you might deal with more important things online rather than just, you know, like meandering through <laughs> one link to another link, um, you know, uh, when, when you're on Facebook or whatever. So, um, and maybe you'll skip the ads, right? Okay. Um, all right. Um, all right, this one, and I don't know, uh, I don't use like to use full screen mode myself much on the computer, but they the suggestion was I guess if you have things on on your desktop or are uh, running across the top of your um, uh, you know like your your browser uh, go to full screen because that will eliminate that and you'll be focused on what's on your screen until you're you're done with that and you you know and you close it so. Um, you know, so that's, uh, you know, I don't think that that's something It wouldn't be something for me that I would find, but depending on what it is that's distracting you, if you tend to click on all the windows that you have open, mine just kind of sit up there, um, you know, like then, then that might be a very good thing for you because you won't see them. So, um, uh, you know, that's something, something to consider. If that's something that, that, that distracts you, then that's something to consider. Um, okay. Um, I, now I've been talking about putting the uh, phone away, but you might want to just put it on airplane mode so that you won't be contacted. You know, you really, you know, you can't reach anybody really. You could do some other things on on the phone if you need to, but um, you know, you're you're not going to be connected to the outside world then on your phone. Um, the only thing is, it's so easy to get out of you know airplane mode that may not be effective for a lot of people. <laughs> Well, I'll just like, you know, on, you know, I'll just click this again and get all out of this. Um, okay. Now this was, oh, and, and Lois is going to like this one. Adopt a discipline such as yoga, tai chi, or meditation. All right. Um, you, I didn't know what you're doing here, uh, Lois, because um, as a yoga teacher, you should be, you know, it's it, apparently the, those disciplines, because they, they, they um, emphasize being in the moment, in the present moment and being present, um, they tend to improve attention. Um, you know, because basically when we talk about maintaining your attention, you're maintaining yourself in the moment, in what you're doing, in where you are, um, and not, you know, go looking over here and there, you know, for, for everything else going on. So, um, and, um, you know, I was surprised to see that, but there are actually, I've actually been studies that, you know, um, uh, meditation practice, for example, will, um, you know, will, will help you with, um, with your attention. So worth it. I have never been particularly good at meditation. <laughs> I've tried and I do keep coming back to it someday. I'll probably get this, but, um, you know, but now it's, uh, it's it makes it even more attractive to me. The fact that, um, that it, it will enhance att attention. Um, okay. 
All right. Get enough sleep. I said about a nap. It's probably better if you sleep enough at night, but for a lot of us, that's very hard. Uh, but, you know, um, really think about how much sleep you're getting and what will enhance your sleep, whether it's, you know, lavender on the pillow or, or um, you know, having the right temp room temperature or, you know, you know, fool around with that and figure out what's, what will help you sleep because that's, so crucial uh, for, um, you know, for your mental health, for your physical health, um, for everything pretty much. So, um, okay. Um, now mind wandering, um, you know, I, I think I did talk a little bit about this before that my, mind wandering helps us to make connections. If we think about things, if we, you know, and, and there's been a suggestion that to actually slot a time in the day for that, like, you know, the, you know, after dinner, um, you know, just let your mind wander. And then even then during the day, if something pops into your head, you can say, well, I'll think about that during my mind wandering session. <laughs> I can, I can, I'll, I'll do that then. Um, because I do want to think about this. I do want to think about, you know, how I'm going to handle this or, or how I'm going to, you know, or, or planning for something else or whatever. So you can, you know, if you have a time to let your mind wander, um, you know, because it is, it's valuable. It's just not valuable when you're in the middle of something else. Um, okay. Um, all right. And well, I've said this before, I'll say it again, because it's on the list on this list here. I'm going to, I will send you this list. Remember that reducing distractions allows us to make connections. And that, you know, it sounds, it sounds far-fetched, but the thing is when, when things are disjointed, because your attention strays and you're pulled away and you come back and you, you know, you're not, you're not thinking deeply and you're not making connections. And, um, you know, sometimes you're not, and it really does affect creativity too, um, not to be able to say, oh, oh, and this is like that thing. And like, you know, uh, so, um, uh, you know, so it's, it's worthwhile to deal with, um, you know, trying to improve the attention. Um, okay. Um, now another, and I, I don't know how we're doing on time. Oh, we're past time actually. Um, I don't know if that's an issue, Mary, is it that we're past time? Okay. Um, I don't know if everybody else is here with me. <laughs> um, uh, the, um, yeah, we're still here. <laughs> okay. I was going to say the, um, the, uh, the, uh, a conversation, there's a special kind of attention for conversation. Uh, so if you have problems maintaining your attention during a conversation, which some people do, it's difficult sometimes for people, um, look at the person who's speaking. So if you're focused on them, it's easier to cut out the other distractions, especially visual distractions. Auditory distractions, maybe not so much. Um, it says, yeah, don't ask, don't hesitate to ask somebody to repeat something. If they, um, uh, you know, if somebody says something, you know, say, oh, you know, and have them re have repeat it. Um, for you to repeat what somebody says, if you especially if you, if you know you're supposed to remember it, like you're making plans with a friend, to say, or maybe ask a question, okay, so we're going to um, meet at so-and-so's house tomorrow at three. You know, repeat what you've heard, um, and it will help you to, first of all, knowing you're going to try to re paraphrase it means that you'll attend better. And then you're reinforcing it by, by repeating it. So that also puts it in, in your memory. Um, okay. Um, if you find that it's difficult for you to, to attend to a conversation, to the extent that you can, and it's not always possible, try to steer the conversation to a quiet place. <laughs> you know, I mean, at a cocktail party, you might be just sunk. Right. Uh, or that gala with the clinking, you know, uh, cocktail glasses and the, you know, the buzz, it might be difficult. But to the extent that you can try, I was at a wedding on Friday night. Forget it. I couldn't talk to anybody at the table pretty much with the band. Um, but to the extent that you can try to steer the conversation to, you know, to a quiet area. Um, OK. And um, don't do something else while you're conversing. This was interesting, I thought. They said, if somebody approach, if you're in the middle of something and you're doing something, somebody approaches you to speak with you, just ask them politely, you know, that you'll go to find them when you're finished with this. You know, you know don't say, I don't want to talk to you, but, you know, um, put, put them off, um, you know, or, or 
deal with talking to, to you know deal with starting a conversation not when you're 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 doing something else um you know don't plan on i mean i suppose some people can like knit while they're talking or whatever but um not not to plan on getting this done and talking to you know uh, a friend especially if it's not going to be like a real you know superficial conversation if it's going to be you know meaty uh you definitely don't want to do that um okay i think that's about it for me <laughs>